Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we will be talking about nested if statements and the boolean data type. But first of all, there's an apology I have to make. I wasn't able to make any videos lately because I've been pretty sick over the past week. I tried to go ahead and record anyway, but it just turned out horrible. Anyway, I'm all better now, so let's get back to making some videos. If you remember, last time we were talking about control flow. We were dealing with if and else statements and today we are going to learn how to use those more effectively. First of all, I am going to teach you about the boolean data type. A boolean is another primitive data type, but it can only have two distinct states. And these two states are either true or false. Let me go ahead and show you. It can either be true or it can be false. So a boolean pretty much acts like a switch that depending on the circumstance you can turn on or off. And this can become very useful in if statements. Here is how we would use it in one. In the head of the if statement we can ask for the state of the boolean variable. So just like before, when we were checking numbers against each other, we can check a boolean variable. So if we were to set my boolean to true, this code right here would be executed. Now that's simple enough. I'm sure you've understood this concept by now. Now let me give you an example that explains how booleans work a little better. Imagine we have two numbers a and b. and we want to check them against each other in an if statement. So here we say, if a is smaller than b, then print out this little message here. What's happening to this expression right here is that internally it gets treated as a boolean expression. This a smaller than b either evaluates to true or false. So what this technically means is that we don't need the boolean variable. We could just write everything out as an expression like we're doing here. But keeping track of things with a boolean variable is a lot easier to manage. And here's something neat you can do. Like I said, behind the scenes this expression is treated as a boolean value. And we can check boolean values for whether they are true or false. So we can write this. Now this has the same meaning as before. It didn't change anything in the code. So, as you might have guessed, when you're working with boolean variables or expressions, you can leave this part right here out. So if we go up here, you can erase this line and the code would still work fine. But what do we do if we want to check for the negation of the expression? Say, we want to check whether a boolean expression is false. Well, we could do just this, same down here. But obviously we then get the opposite meaning. So if we go up here in this line of code, we are actually lying. So let's go ahead and change this so it matches our condition. Same down here. Now if you want to check for a negation, but still omit this part right here, like we did when we checked for whether it's true, you can use the exclamation mark, like this. The exclamation mark stands for the negation of an expression. Now this is faster to type obviously, but I feel like that it really wears down on the code readability. When you're browsing through lots of source code, it can be very easy to miss an exclamation mark. So what I like to do when it comes to boolean expressions like this, is that when I want to check whether it's true, that I check it like this. And when I want to check whether it's false, I write it out. Now again, of course, the choice is yours. I'm just telling you the way I feel like it's easiest to maintain. Now we can also use the negation symbol when we want to check two numbers against each other. Imagine we have two numbers and want to test them for equality. We would do it like this. So if we test for equality between these two numbers, we use two equal signs. And if the numbers indeed match, we print out this line which in this case doesn't make much sense, but you get the idea. Now if we wanted to check for inequality, we could either do it like this, 
or we get rid of this and use the negation symbol. Like this. And that's my preferred way of doing it. As long as you can see what's going on at first glance, you're good to go. Now I've been talking all this time about the boolean data type, so let's put this to use in the next example. Let's get rid of all of this and go back to the game that we had in the previous episode. If you remember, the player had to reach a certain score in order to advance to the next level. So let's set this up real quick. This is the first form of if statements that we encountered. Now one cool thing we can do with if statements is that we can nest them. And this essentially means that we can have an if statement within another if statement. So let's combine this with the knowledge we've gained just now. Wouldn't it be cool that the player could collect a key while he's playing the level? And when he finishes the level with the key in hand, he could unlock some super cool bonus. So how would we keep track of that? Well, we could use a boolean for that. So here we go. We will use this variable to check whether the player has the key at the end of the level. So when he reaches the score goal, we will make an additional check for whether he has the key or not. So here's a quick recap of how this works. When the player reaches the end of the level, we check whether or not he has fulfilled this condition. Did he reach the score goal? If he did, and only then, we'll print out this message and check whether or not he has obtained the key. And as you can see, this if statement is part of the scope of this if statement. Again, the telling indicator being the opened and closed curly braces. Now another way we could have achieved this is by using a more complicated else if structure. Because there's a way to combine multiple boolean expressions into one if statement. But I will show you that next time. But using nested if statements in this manner is really useful if you want to perform checks only after certain conditions have been fulfilled. Like in our example, it only makes sense to check for the key when the player has actually reached the score goal. If he doesn't have enough points, it doesn't matter whether or not he got the key. Now one more quick note on boolean variables. I always like to name them after questions. Of course you can name them whatever you want, but I think it makes sense if you want to ask for its state. Does the player have the key? True or false? So when you find this variable later in the code, you can see at first glance that this is a boolean. Just calling this variable key isn't really expressive. Key could mean anything, and I wouldn't be sure how to treat this variable at first. So I would have to look up its type before I can use it properly. So that's just a little advice for you. But alas, this is all the time I've got for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you did, Feel free to subscribe so you won't miss out on new videos. See you next time!